everyone and welcome back to the craft room. So today's in the craft room is actually a, a the card making edition. Um, I am in the process of getting ready for a craft show that's coming in November and I originally kind of wanted to get started a little bit sooner than I am right now but you know the summertime is just the time where I want to you know, have fun and enjoy things with my family. So I didn't have a ton of time to work on card making projects. So I'm kind of in the process of getting things organized and getting ready. School's starting, so I'm going to have a lot more time to get in the craft room and kind of get back on a schedule again, which I don't know about you, but I kind of like it when I get that little bit of a break. I take a couple months where I'm still, you know, I'm still working on my Etsy shop and I make sure I, I kind of have stuff updated in there. But for the most part, I'm not working on a ton of serious projects. And I love it, the kind of the excitement of getting back into fall and getting back on a schedule again and really kind of feeling creative and getting a lot of ideas put together and um, getting ready to kind of start, you know, crafting on a regular basis. And um, it's just, it's kind of exciting. So um, I think school starts in a, in a week. So we're going to be, I'm going to be, uh, having a lot more kind of quiet time to be able to get in the craft room and, and start working on things. So I was getting my card. I actually have started some card making and I'm going to show you some cards here. But in the meantime, I wanted to just kind of first, I'm going to show you kind of what's on my desk right now and how I, I what my process is for kind of getting my card making going. Um, it's a little bit neater. I try to kind of neaten things up a little bit because I'm going to show you some new supplies that I just got um, from a couple of different places, including the Catherine Pooler uh, Fall Festival collection, as well as some great stuff I found at a cherry on top. So um, I'll, I'll show you those in a minute, but I'll just kind of show you what I have on my desk and, you know, how I work with my, my card making. For those of you that may not be familiar with this channel, I have an Etsy shop where I create junk journals and junk journal ephemera packs. And you can kind of see over here, which is, it's actually very neat right now. <laughs> this is my kind of scrapbooking junk journaling area. So this is, this is pretty much, uh, cleaned up because I haven't been working on a ton of stuff lately. Uh, but here, I'll just show you something really quick. I did get in these beautiful, I showed these on Instagram. I have two different Instagram accounts, one for my junk journaling, which is Blue, Blue Scallop Creations Shop, and then one for my card making, which is just Blue Scallop Creations. And these I showed on my shop Instagram. They are these vintage Avon catalogs, and they're for the 75th anniversary of Avon. Uh, so I, I had to look it up because I couldn't find any dates in here, but that would have been 1961. And there were just these beautiful images in here. And I just thought these were so much fun. And I've got four of them and a couple of them are holiday themed. So these will be fun to work with. I like to uh, use pages from these catalogs or catalogs like this in some of my junk journals that are kind of uh, sort of uh, lady related. So I'll put in, you know, like the um, retro ladies, I'll make a, I'll make a retro ladies junk journal and I'll, I'll put some fun things like that in there. So, so anyway, this is kind of the junk journaling area, which is very clean and neat right now. This over here is card making. And I, I was creating a couple of cards with the, the Catherine Pooler supplies I had. And so this is just my desk right here. I have had this desk forever. Let me kind of pan out a little bit. It is a countertop high uh, crafting desk from the Martha Stewart craft collection that she had probably about maybe 15 years ago. And they were great pieces of furniture. And you can find things similar to these now, but I definitely recommend countertop height. I know a lot of crafters do that, do recommend that um, because you know, you're moving around your craft room a, a lot. It's it's hard to just sit down and do something because you have to keep getting up and down. Plus, it's great to be, you know, when you're crafting, you don't, you kind of don't want to be sitting all day. You want to be standing and kind of moving your, moving around a little bit. So it's nice to have a countertop height, height, countertop height desk. Um, but then over on the desk here, I've got all kinds of things going on here. I've got my chamois. This is, uh, I get these off of Amazon. They're stamp cleaning chamois that I buy in bulk and then I trim them down. Um, they're in my Amazon shop and I trim them down. And then when they get really, really 
dirty, I just throw them out and get a new one. But all you do, they're kind of, it's kind of stiff as you can see. Um, but when you put water on them, they are very pliable and they clean your stamps beautifully, um, both uh, clear and red rubber stamps. So those are great. And this is um, my little magnet that I use for to keep my dies. This is an old Spellbinders uh, tool that they still sell. And I've, I'm going to show you this card in a second with my little pickleball rackets on it. But um, I just have these waiting because I think I'm going to make some more of those cards. And then I have some uh, foam dots. I like to use both the thin foam dots and the regular sized foam dots. And I get these from Scrapbook Adhesives, I think it's called. Um, I've always used these and I really like them. But recently I've been buying the thin version because I find myself sometimes needing just a little bit of a foam dot, not like a super thick one. So these thin ones are great and they come in two sizes too. You can get the, the larger white ones and then they have the smaller ones. I don't think I have any out here. Um, and these are just some Catherine Pooler stamps I was kind of going to get ready to work with. Um, this is the, there, she had a whole, in her collection before this, the fall one, she had kind of a summertime collection that had these tennis rackets and pickleball stamps. And it was just really fun. So I'll show you the card I made. But I've been, for the, the card I made, I used did some ink blending and her inks, um, these are, I have a lot of her mini inks here. Her inks are really good um, for ink blending because they're kind of a combination of a dye ink and a uh, pigment ink. So they're very smooth. They're very good for stamping because you don't get that beading up on your um, on your stamps because they kind of have that a little bit of the pigment in it. But they're very uh, highly pigmented and they they are just great. I love all the color options too, but. Uh, since I've been using them for ink blending too, and my for these particular inks, I really like using the sponge daubers. So I just picked this up from Amazon. This is a um, just a a little case with a collection of the little mini sponge daubers in them, and I I'm gonna keep these just for my Catherine Pooler inks, so I can kind of keep them separated from my uh, distress inks because I also use these for distress inks. So I've got to get these set up too. And then I normally have a glass mat up here, but I took it down because I'm going to be showing my uh, supplies that I, I just got. Um, so I've got this here. And then over here is just some more inks I was um, working with from, from Catherine Pooler. I've got my post-it tape uh, that I was using to make stripes on the card that I'll show you in a second. And just a, a side about post-it tape. So I, when I started to make these stripes on the card, I... I had bought a uh, roll of painter's tape because I thought painter's tape is less expensive than post-it tape. And I thought that would work really well on the card. Well, I put the painter's tape down and it ended up taking up some of the paper. So currently I'm still using the post-it tape. It comes on this little spool here. But um, I'm trying to find kind of a less expensive version of a type of post-it tape. So I, I still have to look on Amazon. If anybody has any ideas, um, let me know in the comments. Uh, because I, like I said, the, the painter's tape didn't work. I, was, I had high hopes that it would work perfectly. But it was a little too, there was a little too much ad adhesive. And washi tape too, I find sometimes has a little too much adhesive as well. And this, this is like premium. I love, post-it tape is perfect for it, but it, it does get a little expensive. So I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to, um, I, I always reuse it. Like if I'm making a card with the same colors, I'll just keep this tape and, and reuse it again. So I do try to do that, but I don't know. I'm trying to find a new option. And then these are just some more inks I have here. Uh, these are the little sponge daubers I was using for Catherine Pooler. Um, and then just some stamps here. And then over on this side, this is kind of my back area with my, I keep my stamps in these Alex drawers here and then some punches and other, other stuff. Um, but these are just some stamps I'm working on. Um, I just got the stamp wheel from Altenu like a year later. <laughs> I, I'm always, like I always say, I'm, I'm always late to the, 
to the party when it comes to stamping tools because I kind of wait and, and think figure out if I'm really going to be able to use something like that. Um, I'll show you this in a second, but um, I just have it sitting here for now. I've got the stamps I'm going to show you and then um, some other things. These are some cards I was um, going to show too. Um, this is, these are, I have a link to my, um, to this particular uh, product and you've probably seen these before. These are the color cubes and I am working on some fall themed cards and I had this little piece of a circle, like a circle die cut that I had embossed with some uh, really pretty, or actually I think I stenciled these. I used gold embossing powder and stenciled these leaves on here. Um, and I've had this sitting in my extras pile for a long time and I want to find a way to use it for a fall card. Um, but I wasn't sure what colors to combine it with. So I was get, I pulled these two cards and I'm going to kind of work with them and figure out um, what I want, how I want to make the card or what I want to combine for the card. So it's great. They have a picture, um, kind of an image, uh, inspiration image, and then they have all the colors that they pull from the image. So I thought that went really well with this particular, either this card or this card would go going to do this with one hand here. Um, this card or this card would go really well with this little piece here. So I'm going to, I just have it up here for now because I'm going to uh, go to this later, but um, I just uh, was kind of experimenting and seeing if I could find some colors that would go with this to make a card. So that's what I have been working on. So my mind is kind of all over the place when I'm card making. I have a lot of stuff out and I just, that's how I create, but, um, I need to make a lot of cards by November, which I think I'll be able to do if I get on a schedule. Um, I'm going to dedicate, uh, one day a week for just focusing on making greeting cards. And I think, uh, that'll work. And I think, um, I, I'll be able to have enough cards for that. I usually, for my craft shows, I like to sell greeting cards and then, um, I also do my, my junk journals. I sell those to all those, those don't sell as well at, um, my local, uh, craft shows. They do sell a lot better on Etsy. Um, but I was, I don't normally do a lot of craft shows because they're extremely time consuming to prepare. Um, and sometimes there's a cost to them, but I was inspired by Julie Fafan Balzer, who I listened to her podcast uh, I'll put a link below to it. And she's just, her podcasts are great. They're so inspiring for artists. And she's an artist herself. She works with mixed media. And she had a podcast talking about ways to kind of get out of your, your craft studio or your studio and kind of go out and do field trips and um, kind of expand your mind when it comes to doing your art. And that's how you're going to be more creative. And one of the things she had suggested was to go, you know, and be involved in the community with a craft show or something like that. And, you know, with a mindset that maybe you won't, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money doing it, but just the idea of getting out there and, you know, talking to people and being around other artists is just such great inspiration. And I, I love, I actually love craft shows for that reason. I just love seeing what people make and talking to like-minded people that like to make art. And so it's really great. So if you are ever wondering about, you know, if you should do a craft show or, or not, definitely give it a try and see if it's something for you. Cause if anything, it's great to just get out and, um, talk to people and be a part of the art community. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the new products I got. I'll show you some of the cards I created and um, I'll just kind of show you what I'm planning on working on. So the first thing I wanted to show were uh, the stamps that I got from the Catherine Pooler Fall Festival collection that has just come out now. And She's offering this deal right now that if you spend uh, $50, you can get a free uh, Peking Yorkie stamp set. That's what this one is called. And this is so cute. And I love these Peking Pets, uh, this, the Peking Pets collection. She has a couple other stamp sets um, that have the little dogs and the cats that have the little, kind of like their little heads are peeking out of something. And I actually, um, I have her original one that comes with little hats and this is uh, still available actually it's called just plain peeking pets and it's got all kinds of uh 
dogs and then it's got some cats too and I've used these for birthday cards um, and I just put like a big happy birthday sentiment above their little heads and I have I have like three of the little heads peeking out from uh, the bottom of the card and it's really cute I think I, I'm pretty sure I have an Instagram uh, that I did of one of these that I did but um, these are a lot of fun to work with. And so I saw the Yorkie one and I just thought this was so cute and how she combines it with the leaves. And let me show you the card that I made with it. Um, this I have on Instagram. Uh, oh, and what's great about this too, if you get the, the, the stamps, it is what is the freebie, but you could also purchase the dies separately. And the dies come with a little die that um, kind of makes a little slit in the leaf pile. And you can tuck the little Yorkie's head right in there. And then it's like it's peeking out of the leaves. But this one, I combined um, the, the peeking Yorkie stamp set along with this other one that I got uh, called... This is called... Changing Leaves. I got the stamp set as well as the uh, the die set. And the stamp set's great. It's got uh, just the kind of shadows of the leaves and it's got the veins that you can put in the leaves. And then um, it's got some different sentiments too. And so I use those leaves with some of her inks. These are kind of the more fall inks. Um, the leaves I use Sauna, Flame, and Spice. This is a great color combination for fall. Um, but I use this to stamp the background uh, just with some leaves. And then um, I just added the little the little puppy here with the with the leaf pile. And these I just colored with Copics. And it really it seemed I first I was thinking it might be kind of hard to color every all the leaves with the Copics, but it's really not. I just used a basic kind of a lighter color Copic for the background. I think this one, E31. So I just kind of went around um, the outline of some of the leaves and then I added some more colored leaves just with some other Copic colors. And then I did kind of a shadow on the outside with a darker brown, but I thought that turned out really cute. And um, so, I don't know, I just thought this was kind of a fun fall card. Uh, some other things that are in the collection that I picked up were, uh, this is called Festive Fall Sentiments and I really like this one too because it comes with a or it doesn't you can buy separately um a die set that cuts out the um sentiments here so i got the die set to go with it but just follows in the air um autumn is a time when pie is a food group i think that's cute to send to somebody just for a fun uh you know greeting and then just a regular thanks which is always nice to have uh on a uh, on a stamp set and it doesn't really, you know, it's it's got kind of the little, the little wheat that's around it. But this could go year round. Um, Gather together with thankful hearts. So I thought these were great. And then I also ended up picking up a, this, an older Christmas stamp set. Um, this one is called Holiday One Liner Sentiments, and I just really liked the clean lines on these sentiments and how they're just like little strips. So I could incorporate these into any kind of Christmas card. For my craft show, I'm going to be making a lot of Christmas cards, so I thought this would be really good um, for that. I I have a lot of Christmas stamps, and I only use them once a year, really, so I don't usually... I'm trying not to buy any new ones this year, but I just... I bought just a couple of new ones, and that's it, because the ones I have, I really like, so um, those I'm probably just going to keep on using. So that's uh, Catherine Pooler, and I... Oh, I also wanted to show you the, the pickleball card. I, I put it on Instagram, but I wanted to show it to you up close. Um, this is the one that I used the little pickleball, um, with the little pickleball stamps. Called Make a Racket stamp set. So I used this stamp set and then I made this kind of retro style uh, greeting card with it. So it's got the little pickleball racket that I just stamped with um, this uh, grass skirt green ink. This is a great kind of um, bright green ink. And then I made, these are the little uh, stripes I made with, this is ink blending with the Catherine Pooler inks. That looks so nice with um, just using the little sponge daubers. It, it's like the most smoothest finish you get. And I just picked a couple of colors with that and then used the, the post-it tape to kind of make the stripes. 
and then pretty simple on the front. And then inside, I actually used an older stamp set. I turned it into a birthday card and just added this birthday on the inside. This is, I can't find this anymore. I think, I don't think that she sells it anymore. Um, but this was called Let the Good Times Roll. And they, it had roller skates and like just some really fun retro images on it. But um, unfortunately, I can't find it on the website anymore. So, um, so that's not av available anymore. But um, the, the thing I love about, and I, I will say too, I'm a brand ambassador for Catherine Pooler. I've been it for maybe about a year. Um, so I do get a little bit of a discount on the supplies, but I bought them all myself. Um, but the thing I love about her stamps, I have a more clean and simple style when I make my cards. And she's got stamps that are great for that. Kind of um, when you're doing the clean and simple style, it's um, mainly you're having a lot of white space, but then you have a really uh, big focal point on the card that kind of draws your eye to it. And she has got stamps that have great focal points. So say like the, the pickleball rackets. I mean, it's just kind of un unexpected and it's just adorable. Or like the roller skates or something like that. And she has a, does a lot of retro style images too. I think she um, likes that kind of stuff. So she, she offers a lot of that too, uh, both for the holidays and just for regular. Um, so I just, I've, I've always loved her stamps. And then the inks I've fallen in love with. I've just, um, I've, got the whole collection of the colors because I like the their, her party inks particularly I really like because they're just nice bright uh, primary colors and then um, she's got a color wheel you can download and work with the inks and get everything to combine and it's just it's it's really great um, just to work with all of her uh, her supplies so um, so that's the Catherine Pooler uh, things that I got and then next so I went on to the Pink and Main website. I don't, I haven't bought from Pink and Main in a really long time. I had a really cute, uh, actually, I'll show it to you. I just had a couple of things from, from the shop. Um, and this I have used so many times. This is the Wildflower stamp set. And I just love these daisies. And I thought I'd go back and see if they had any kind of fall themed uh, things in their collection. So, so I went back and I ended up, <laughs> I, I found some fall things, but then I also typed, I always type in uh, the word retro onto websites with stamps um, so I can find some really fun retro style stamps. And I ended up finding some really cute things too. So um, this, I'll start from the bottom here. Um, so I found some really cute rainbow stamps. I make a lot of cards that um, are just, you know, like a get well or just a happy greeting type encouraging card. I like to make those a lot. And so I got this one called Sending Cheer. And I just think those rainbows are so cute. And this big Sending Cheer uh, sentiment is adorable too. And it just um, has a couple of encouraging sentiments. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Uh, like a rainstorm, this too shall pass. So I love stamp sets like that because a lot of those types of cards sell at my craft shows like in, cards for encouragement and get well and then I got some I found these really great rainbow dies uh, they're different shapes um, this one is called tall rainbow die so I thought that'd be a great focal point on a card like a background and you just put a sentiment in the middle there so i thought that would look really good this one is called uh mini slim die rainbow cascade so this will kind of you can create a rainbow kind of going down your card in the middle um so this is more for a slimline card um but i think this will be good for you can even make a small frame in the middle of a regular sized a2 card and this would be really um, fun to do the different, you can do the retro orange and um, orange, yellow, and red colors to kind of make that sort of 70s look. So I really like that. Um, I also got this, uh, this is a rainbow slide die. So this I think you could use either way. You can go across your card like this, you could go like that. Um, there's just different things you could do with that. So I thought this would be fun to work with too. Then Along the, along the lines of a rainbow, I got an uh, embossing folder. This is the rainbow embossing folder. So I thought that would be cute for backgrounds, like a tone-on-tone -tone look with white. And then the stencil, the rainbow stencil. So it's just little rainbows that can be a background. And then I also got uh, this 
this is called the daisies embossing folder i just thought this was really pretty i love daisy flowers on stamps and anything with stamps or dyes anything like that and then uh, a couple of fall things i found these really great leaves this is a cut and emboss folder or emboss and cut folder so you run it through it embosses the leaves with kind of like the veins and everything and then you can cut the leaves out um, with the dyes so I thought that's perfect and I think actually I think it does it at the same time let me yeah I don't think it's a separate thing I think I have one other cut and emboss thing from another company yeah it's stuck to the embossing folder so you literally just have to run it through the machine and you, it's cuts and embosses everything and you have a not, lot of nice leaves so um I love using these for tone on tone backgrounds. So maybe I'll cut the leaves out in white and then pop them up as a background on a card. And um, that would look really nice. Um, and again, you could use, you know, different colored cardstock and do the leaves that way. So there's a lot you can do with that. And then I found this really cute, uh, it's called Java Nice Day uh, stamp set. And I, I just liked the way these cups looked, the little coffee cups and, um, just kind of the way they were sketched. I just thought they had a good good look to them. So I, I picked those up because people also like kind of the coffee themed card, the, the kind of the pun cards with coffee. Those are always popular too at craft shows. So um, I find I sell a lot of those. And then to kind of go along with the coffee, I found this really cute uh, die set. It's called Pastry Tray Dies. And I got this because I actually have a lot of other stamp sets that are food related that have little mini uh, croissants and cupcakes and things like that. And I figured I could combine those stamps and dies with these and just kind of, you know, make a little, like a cute little card with that on it because the, the cards that have food on them are also really popular too, like the food pun cards. And I just like those because I think they're, they're fun to work with, but I just, I like the little tray here. I thought that was, that was really fun. So this is from Pink and Maine. And then the last place I wanted to show you was from a cherry on top. And I don't show them a lot. Um, I do buy from them, but they're kind of, um, they're a, a one-stop shop. And I love them for basically scrapbooking, card making, um, any type of mixed media. They have it all. And um, and they have a lot of things that are different than some of the other places that sell that kind of stuff. And so I went on there originally. Oh, they were having their, um, I think it was like a warehouse sale. They have really great sales too. And if you sign up or if you get an account on their website, you can earn points. And the points go towards um, your payment at the end. So when you go to pay for your things, you can pay with some of your points. Um, and they usually have really good sales too. They have promo codes you can use every time. Um, they have a great clearance section with like, I mean, really great like dollar things. And then they have, um, and then they have daily deals too, where you can go on and find out what's on sale for the day. And like I said, it's everything. It's embellishments, scrapbooking, stamps, um, some, a lot of things you can't find other places. So I, I always like going to uh, this website. So let me show you what I got here. So uh, first of all, um, let's see, what was I? Oh, again, I punched in retro <laughs> in the search bar because I wanted to see, you know, what they had um, for kind of retro style things. And I found these washi sheets from Brutus Monroe and they're called uh, tea, towel, tea Towels Washi Sheet. And I thought these were so unique. With Since I make uh, junk journals, I I'm always looking for things that are kind of vintage washi tape and things like that that I can decorate pages with. But I thought these would be great too for, uh, you know, decorations on cards. You could use like a little strip at the bottom of the card where it opens and it's just kind of a nice touch if you're making kind of a, a vintage style card. Um, and these are solid washi, so you can peel it up like this. So they look like that. So it's basically just a sticker, but I like the images on it. So it's just kind of, you know, like the vintage tea towel style. So I got two sets of these. You get two sheets in a pack. So I got those. And then I got, um, this is from Altenew. 
they have all the brands on there too. So they have Altenew and all, all the big brands um, they have on their website. Um, this is Altenew. Make sure I get the right name here. Uh, the Deco Greeting Stamp Set. And so it's kind of like a 20s style uh, script here. So have a dazzling day. Our friendship is timeless. You are so glamorous. And I thought this would be really good with some of the other stamp sets I have that have to do with fashion. I'll, a lot of times I'll make a, a fashion themed card. So I thought these would go with that. I also have uh, some stamp sets from other companies that have kind of an art deco theme to them. And so this would be a great combination with those older stamp sets. So I like those. And then this kind of popped up when I was looking at this one, and this is the Streamlined Sprig stamp set. And I just like the kind of modern look of this and just it'd be perfect for clean and simple cards. And um, you can paper piece, you know, inside with different colors and you, or you can use the, the little uh, flower that's kind of open like that. So I just kind of like the simplicity of this. So I thought that would be a good uh, thing to create some cards with. And then I also, I got some more. I, I don't have a lot from, I don't think I have anything from Brutus Monroe actually, but they keep, they kept coming up. Um, I got this mixed media stencil. This is sort of um, kind of the retro style that I was looking for. It's called Atomic Stars Layering Stencil. And they had some cute ideas for using this stencil. You get two in the pack and you use one. And then I think you kind of, you, you could layer over it with this or you, I forget how you, I have to go back online and see how you use it. But you, I think you'd, you use one and then you can layer over with the other one and do like some ink blending and that kind of thing. And you get this really um, fun look with it. So I thought that would be fun for my retro cards. And then I got some more food pun stamps. This is called, um, let's see what this one is called, uh, Pastry Pal stamp set. So it's like a little, little pop tart, um, with what's popping, popping by to say hi. And then just some more, um, fun food pun sentiments here, which I thought would go great with the tons of food style stamps I have. Um, I've got every food you can imagine in a stamp set <laughs> and lots of like older stamp sets too. So these will be fun to kind of add to those. And I like the script on these. I thought they were it, it's kind of nice because it gives you kind of different different scripts, but they're all cute. So that's Brutus Monroe. And then the last thing I got was the stamp set from Altenu called Blooming Gramophone. And I just thought this was interesting. Um, this came up when I typed in retro in the search bar. And this this old fashioned record player came up, but I love the the big um, you know the the floral design on the gramophone. And then I think I could use this in combination with, I have some more kind of music pun sentiments that I think would be great to use in combination with this too. And it's nice. It's got some music notes and kind of some swirly things. So great for clean and simple. Uh, you can decorate. Uh, you use the, so I got the die set too. So you can use the different stamps on the dies to make a different type of, um, I don't know what you call that. Um, tube on the top of the gramophone. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can make a different style using the different floral stamps. So I thought that would be a great addition to that. And it's just got some fun puns. Um, but so I got some really great stuff. So I'm going to make some cards with all of these and I will share them on Instagram. So be sure to, uh, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, um, if, or if you follow me on my, you know, uh, Blue Scallop Creations shop, follow me on Blue Scallop Creations. And you'll it's basically just a portfolio of all my um, cards that I make. And then I also have um, a section on my blog that is kind of like my greeting card gallery. And it goes into more detail on the supplies I use for the greeting cards. So if you're interested in knowing about any of those, you can you can go to the blog too and look those up. Um, oh, the last thing I just I, I want to show really quick what I had gotten. Um, I picked up the stamp wheel. And like I said, it's like a year later that I picked it up. Um, but I, I ordered it from Altenew directly. It comes in this really pretty box. 
Um, I'm going to find a use for this box because I think it's too pretty to throw away. It's like a nice thick box, um, but I took all the foam and stuff out of it and I'm just going to keep it. Um, I know I'll find something to do with it. But um, I just had never th thought to get it, but I feel like after watching a couple of uh, demonstrations that I really would find a use for it in a different way than using kind of a, a hinged system for a, like a, a stamping tool. And I like the idea that um, this is kind of, the, I've already used it um, and, I, and I like it. Um, I like having this grip mat here. I do have the waffle flower grip mat that I've just been loving. Um, I use it for ink blending and uh, uh, doing uh, stenciling. It's really great too. Um, but this comes with one of these that you put right in this little platform here. And then I ended up getting both. It, it comes with this, uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this is like the main, uh, the stamping, I don't know what you call this top part, like the acrylic piece that goes on the top. This is kind of in a diagonal, has a diagonal pattern on it so that you can do the um, wreath stamping with it. But I like the demonstrations of how people were doing, um, using sentiments on cards to make kind of different uh, angles with the sentiments and mul doing multiple sem sentiments on one card and going in different directions. And I just, I thought this was a great way. You don't have to keep peeling your stamp off and putting it on and you can have your stamps all over the, the platform and just kind of, you know, put it on, stamp it, do this, that. So I have to experiment with it some more, but um, I got the main um, stamp wheel with all the stuff with it and then I also picked up the one that has the grid on it because I thought that might be handy to have the grid um, to help line up the stamps. Um, I also got the the low tack sticky mat um, that they had recommended on the website for if you're using pieces of vellum or something like that which I thought was a good idea because I do use vellum sometimes to stamp uh, flowers and that kind of thing. And I don't want to end up ripping that with the, because this can be very grippy. Um, and then I also got, because since I use uh, red rubber stamps as well, I got their uh, Slim Grip sticky mat. So it's a, it's a slimmer uh, mat that you stick in the bottom here. And you can use those for the um, kind of, you know, the, the thicker red rubber stamps that already have the little padding on it. So... I thought that would be in handy too. And then the center alignment guides I picked up uh, to align the, my uh, cardstock onto the, the grid. And then um, that was it for all the parts to it. So I'm going to experiment with it a little more and then you'll probably see me using it uh, maybe for some demonstrations or something. But um, but I think this will be good. I'm still going to use my Misty. Um, for stamping too, but I figure with all the cards I'm going to be making, I want to have different options for tools for stamping. Um, the one thing I really liked about this one was, and they had demonstrated this too, because it's got, you're, you're stamping from above. So you kind of line this up in this little thing here. Um, because you're stamping from above and the stamp is coming down straight, you get like a perfect imprint. There's no need to stamp again. I was um, doing some stamping with some of the leaves I had showed you earlier and the solid leaves just, I, I didn't have to stamp again. So sometimes with the hinged, you have to kind of stamp a couple of times because you get it kind of an uneven part the way the hinge is. Um, so that's just the one thing with that. But um, having the hinge tool is a lot easier too because it's a lot smaller, so it's easier to store. This is kind of big. I got to find a, a place to store it, but um, I, I like it that it's loose and I can pull it off and then kind of like stamp and do my thing. Um, so I think this will, this will come in handy because I found myself wishing I had something a little bit loose that I could just move around rather than um, having to pull something off of a, a hinged tool in that way. So, so stay tuned for more information on this, but so far I'm, I've been enjoying using it for the, the short amount of time that I've had it. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, like I said, I'm going to, I'm excited to get started kind of starting the, the, the crafting school year, I guess, as it is. Um, just getting started on cards. I'm still, I'm going to be sh sharing uh, junk journals too, because I'm going to be making some junk journals for the craft show. 
Um, so I'm definitely going to be working on those as well. But um, this is kind of my, my card making day. So I thought I would share with you what I'm working on. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in my next video.